thank you for joining us or me for another episode of Smack That Recap. I am one take, going solo dolo. Chubbs got stuck at work. Gotta make that money, so, you know. Um, while you're here, like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff helps us out. Also, comment, be interactive with us. We're not boring, I swear. Uh, you can also find us at Facebook and Instagram is at na.podcast919, and then Twitter is na underscore podcast919, and then our individual handles are there as well. Um, come holla at us, you know? All right, so back to the show. Smackdown for June 13th. They were in Nolens. This is the one. They were in, nah, Raw in Laf- Lafayette. Either way, they were in uh, New Orleans. The uh, show started out uh, with announcing that New Day and the Fashion Police were going to be facing the Usos and the Colons, 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 um, in an eight-man eight tag match. Um, and then a little, little, they announced something else. didn't really matter. It was just a weird package, video package. I shouldn't say weird, it's just unneeded is what I mean. Uh, then cut to the New Day coming to the ring. And then as they come to the ring, they had a, a jazz group called Soul Rebels that did their music. That was pretty sweet. I liked it. I actually went on YouTube and watched it again with my headphones in. It sounded awesome. Um, they did a promo. Typical New Day promo. Funny. Uh, on point. The Usos interrupted it and basically came out and did what they've been doing, saying, hey, we run this. We've been running this. You guys are a joke. And then Breezango interrupted them, and they kind of had a back and forth with the Usos. It was kind of funny. And then the the Colons, the Colones, interrupted them. Uh, basically them all saying that they thought they should be tag champs, and then he went to commercial. Come back from commercial, the match actually starts. And good news for New Day, Kofi Kingston was in ring competing, which I was glad to see, like Kofi. Uh, so it was Kofi and Big... No, it was Kofi and Xavier alongside Breezango facing the Colons, Clones, Colons, and um, the Usos. Uh, it was actually, it was a pretty decent match. Uh, I mean, good good people or good uh, wrestlers altogether anyways. But yeah, it was a pretty decent match. Um, back and forth, this and that. Uh, the New Day and Breezango ended up getting the win, which makes me wonder about uh, Money in the Bank on Sunday. I guess we'll see. Uh, after that... This, this was an episode that, like, I barely have a half a page worth of notes. It was a go-home show for Money in the Bank as well, by the way. I just, the last two or three weeks, their episodes have felt like they were only an hour long. And I don't know if you can say, well, that's good. That means you're engaged in it and your time's passing by. I don't think that's it. It just doesn't feel like they're doing too much. Like, when, when I watch uh, NXT, which is only an hour long, and I have the same amount of notes that I have for a two hour long show and it feels like they pack in a bunch into NXT. Yeah, whatever. Is what it is. Uh, after that we had AJ in the backstage talking with Shinsuke. Um, you couldn't really hear what they were saying but they were talking about their match. Oh, that's what was announced at the beginning that there were the the main event was going to be a six man tag match with AJ, Shinsuke and Sammy going up against Kevin Owens, Dolph Ziggler, and Baron Corbin. So AJ's talking to Shinsuke backstage, and then Sammy comes in. And I don't care. I've, I've heard I've heard Dave Meltzer. Um, I've heard other podcasts that I listen to complain. Or I shouldn't say complain. Basically saying that they feel like Sammy's character is being used the way it has been when he has talking um, segments or promo segments. Like, he's being punished, and I don't get it. I th- really think that they just understand how quirky he is in real life and how it's, like, people that know him well find it funny now, but when you first meet him, you're like, oh, he's cool, and then you're just like, all right, he's obnoxious, and then you're like, oh, no, he's really cool. Like, it's one of, one of those deals. Like, Kevin Owens, who's known him 
many, many, many years, and like Kevin Owens has said, he's been beating him up for 15 years wrestling. Um, he says that he's seen Sami Zayn get friends for the exact same reason he lost friends. And he also, people start liking him, and Sami does nothing different. He's just a quirky guy, so it's more of an exaggerated, his character on SmackDown, or his gimmick, is more of an exaggerated him. So long story short, after that rant, I think it's hilarious. Um, so Sammy's doing this whole thing with AJ and Shin- Shinsuke, where he's like, all right, well, you know, maybe we should talk about, you know, strategy. You know, what do you think? What do you think? Maybe we should try this. Maybe we should try that. Well, I don't want to be the only one talking. You got any ideas? And AJ goes, I think, and he goes, you know what? What about if we do this? If they start out with Baron, I should start out because, you know, Baron is big and strong, but he's like, I have a really good record against him. I'm 2-0. and But then again... What if they start Dolph or Kevin Owens? Or maybe what if right now they're actually plotting against us trying to plan what they're going to do? Oh, I don't know. He's like, I don't want to be the only one talking. Any ideas? And AJ goes, nah, man, I think we're good. We got it. And very excitedly, Sammy just goes, that is why you are P1. You're the one. You're the phenomenal. High five. And he's like, no, 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 no high five. We save the high five for when we win, because we are going to win. Am I right, Shin? Huh, Shin? And he looks at Shinza- Shin- Shinsaki, Shin- <laughs> Nakamura. Jeez, I'm brain fart. And he's just, like, using his hands, like, trying to entice words out of Shinsuke. And Shinsuke just does his weird little squinty face thing. And he's like, huh? Eh? He goes, exactly, my man. And he, like, hits him on the chest. He's like, all right, I'm going to go stretch, and then we can work this out. And he, like, walks away and then turns and comes back the other way. And Shinsuke's kind of got a weird look on his face, and AJ is just like, what the hell, man? Like, got that kind of look. And Shinsuke just gets this weird grin on his face. He goes, I like him. And AJ goes, you would. Uh, either way, it was hilarious. I don't know what anyone else has said about it yet, but I thought it was hilarious, and I think that portion of Sammy is. Just wanted that on the record. All right. Moving on on. After that, we had a Mojo Raleigh interview with R- Renee. Or was it Dasha? No, it was Dasha. Basically saying, you know, after you lost, where do you go from here? And he was just saying, you know, yeah, it sucked uh, that I lost, but I thank Shane for giving me the opportunity. And I can tell you that the gender that I beat two months ago, the this gender is not the gender I beat two months ago. He's much, much more of a beast, this and that. Basically just trying to sell him, hype him up. Um, and Roj... Rojo. Mojo was basically just, you know, go, he ended up going Mojo. I'm going to keep on moving. I'm going to take this as ammunition. And then, boom, Zack Ryder shows up and is like, I think we got some unfinished business as tag partners, which part of me is just like, cool. I mean, I've never been a huge fan of Zack Ryder. Um, but you just, you're breaking up all these tag teams and you bring Zack Ryder back and put him right back into one. Nah, whatever. Uh, and then after that, we had Baron and Dolph were in the locker room backstage, and Kevin Owens came in, and they all just looked tense and were just like, what do you think, we're just going to follow your lead? Is that what you're coming in here to talk to us about? And Kevin was basically just saying, no, look, we can either go out there and beat the crap out of each other and be worse for the wear at Money in the Bank, or we can go out there as a team beat the crap out of those three guys, take them out of the match. That way they're beat up and bruised for money in the bank, and then it's just the three of us going at each other for the money in the bank. Um, and then Kevin walked out. He was all, he was gone. And then after that, there was a uh, Randy, or, oh no, I totally skipped. Uh, Jinder had a uh, in-ring promo before Baron and Dolph uh, and Kevin Owens segment. Um, I know in ring, gender is boring, and doesn't do anything spectacular. And even though he's saying a lot of the same stuff in his promos, he's at least well spoken enough where it comes off properly. So I'm at least glad for that. And I will say I like his new style of entrance, how he's introduced and comes out, and then the the red carpet rolls basically and he walks through and then I like how he grabs the belt and folds it up and like basically bows to it and puts his head on that I like that just out of the respect thing um so he did his promo basically saying that he's gonna do what he's already done and take out the viper and he's just gonna be a little garden snake and go on into mediocrity and then 
Randy Orton's music hit. Once his music hit, I was like, it's Randy Orton. He's not he's not coming straight on. So the music hits. Ginger sends the Singh brothers really intimidating, all four foot eight, three three ounces of them. Oh, so intimidating. He sends them out of the ring kinda of to the ramp to meet Orton, but Orton's not there. Orton's under the ring, you see him pop up from the the announcer table side, come up and RKO out of nowhere. He leaves into the crowd, does his normal thing. Then there was the Baron Dolphin Kevin seg- Kevin Owens segment that I said. Um, and then after that, Orton was walking backstage, and Renee stopped him to interview him and said, you know, what do you have to say about, you know, what, what happened to what you did to gender? And he's like, time for talking's over. I'm letting my actions do all the talking exactly as my RKO did. And he basically said he was going to win, and then walked away he went. Um, then after that, we had Charlotte versus uh, the Revival's vocalist. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean Natalia. Um, it was actually, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of Natalia, but it was a, a decent match. It had some sloppy parts in it. Uh, <laughs> that sounded more dirty than intended. Um, not necessarily botches, but kind of close. Uh, either way, Charlotte won. After this, we had a Fashion Files called Sweet Victory, because obviously they won earlier in the night. Um, it was another Fashion Files that was hilarious. Uh, um, Tyler was attacked by somebody. It had um, Fandango was looking in a mirror, talking to himself. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, I do have great pecs. I <laughs> also thought it was funny the way the uh, fashion files started out, because you know they always do like a little voiceover at the beginning. They said something le- left a bad taste in my nose. And I just laughed because it was stupid. Um, so either way, Fandango is in a mirror. T- voiceover talking to himself, and he's like, where's Breeze? So he goes looking for him, goes into their office. The office is kind of destroyed again, and um, Tyler's knocked out, so he kind of, like, shakes Tyler awake and tells him to give him a description, and he'll draw him out, so he's got a marker, and he's drawing. It ends up just being two stick figures, and Tyler's like, that's exactly what they look like. So they get up, and they're, like, on the case. Um Kind of made it sound like it was going to be Ascension, the way Tyler started explaining them, but there were no real other hints. Um, had some funny stuff on the board. Had a, a picture of Sami Zayn. It just said generic, needs a mask, which is funny because it used to be El Generico. He was a luchador that wore a mask. Um, had some other funny stuff. You can find the pictures all over the place. I don't feel like trying to remember, so take that. Um, after that... I feel, I feel like I, I'm skipping stuff. Oh, I totally did skip something. Um, I'm trying to read my notes, but I keep tip, tipping down to make sure that my program is still recording and whatnot. Idiot. Um, so before the gender promo, going back, because I'm an idiot, Naomi had a match versus Tamina. And just as the match is getting ready to start, Lana comes out um, to just watch the mat- match. Um... I'm undecided on, like, I like Lana's music, and I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know, it's catchy. I like it. Um, but either way, she came out just to watch the match. She didn't do anything. And then Naomi ended up getting the win, and as she was celebrating, Lena, Lena, Lana came from behind and gave her what we're guessing is Lana's new finisher, which was like a face-to-face half-chicken-wing Blue Thunder Power Slam without the spin. I was I just called it Lana Crush. <laughs> um, it was actually pr- a pretty de- it was enough of a move where I was like, all right, I, I I can deal with seeing these two have a match, even though I'm still annoyed about how it transpired. All right, so then after that, cut through all the other crap that I talked about. After the Fashion Files, they had an interview with Lana, and. She in the backstage, and she basically said, I don't care what the, the universe thinks about me, anyone thinks about me, I just want to win and become the first ravishing women's champion, blah, blah, blah. I really wish that they'd find a way to get her to drop her accent. Like, they literally could have played it into... Chubbs didn't agree with me because he thought this was too childish or too high schooly, and I'm always complaining about that, especially with the women's division. Um... But I felt like since they broke Rusev and, and Lana up 
in the show, but they're married in real life or whatever. They could have played it where Alana, where Alana, where Lana was like, "Hey, I'm not actually Bulgarian or Russian. I'm American. I've been lying to you." And Rusev, you know, instantly is just like, "Well, what else have you been lying about? How, like, I can't trust you." And like, they they break up, and then she can start having her American accent, and then later on, Rusev can be like, "You know what?" I fell in love with, if they ended up putting them back together as a duo, be like, hey, I fell in love with you, I can look over that, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, just a quick idea, but they're not going to do it because they're idiots. They'd rather have Lana have a fake Russian accent that's hit or miss. And then after that, we had our main event, which was, again, Kevin Owens, Dolph Ziggler, and Baron Corbin versus AJ Shinsuke Nakamura. I have to say it that way, don't ask me why. And then Sami Zayn. Um... This was a, this was also a pretty decent match. This one felt a little bit a little bit more cohesive than the last ones these guys have had. Uh, the faces ended up winning AJ Shin and Sammy, and then immediately afterward the excuse me the heels attacked, and then some of like Baron Corbin was outside the ring, Sammy was outside the ring. I don't know. Either way, the heels ended up attacking. Um, Dolph and Kevin got got the jump on all of them and ran into Sammy with a ladder, ran into AJ with a ladder, then they were face to face um, just looking at each other, then obviously the camera guy thought that since Kevin Owens pointed at the money in the bank, that that meant he needed to scroll or pan up to the money in the bank case that's above the ring so you didn't get to see Baron Corbin come in and attack Kevin Owens from behind and knock him into Dolph Ziggler, and then Kevin o- or uh, Baron beat the crap out of everyone else. Then Shinsuke came in, beat the crap out of them, opened up the ladder, climbed up the ladder, went and actually took the Money in the Bank case down, and you could tell that was his first time being on a ladder trying to get something off of a hook. Um, that doesn't fare well for Shinsuke as far as how... WWE likes to telegraph stuff. But, I mean, Money in the Bank is usually... I mean, you guys, anyone listening, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like the majority of the time, the Money in the Bank match, the winner is an up-and-comer that needs it to get over and have a push opposed to somebody like AJ or Shinsuke or, you know, Kevin Owens who are already in the title races. They don't need the Money in the Bank to help get them over or have a push. Um... And that was the end of our show. It went to black with um, Shinsuke on the ladder holding the briefcase. Looking all Shinsuke-like. I really don't get why they keep... um, It seems like each week they get him tighter and tighter pants, and I don't need to see that uh, frontal print, if you you get what I'm saying. Um, But that's all I got for this show. I kind of try to make it quick since it's me by myself, and I'm doing them a little bit late since... Chubbs wasn't sure if he was going to be able to be here on time or not. So I'm trying to make them short, get them up so they're not late. Um, Like, share, comment, especially the like and share, because that really helps us out as far as our other videos showing up. Um, Our schedule may change a little bit. I usually have it on the screen. I'm not going to this time until we get it more ironed out. Uh, Chubbs said I could just take the times out and keep it, but we're not sure. Uh, Depending on how his Wednesdays go, we might not get stuff up until Thursday, so I'm going to wait. But definitely comment, talk, talk to us. If you got something in the show that I happen to miss or you got an opinion on it or, you know, engage with us. We're not afraid to talk about stuff. It's kind of the point of this. Um, And again, look on your screen right now. You'll see all of our social medias. And for other episodes check out our other content too we also do some video game stuff which i'd like to do more it's just kind of hard doing it with everything else we're doing as well it's just the two of us and schedule wise blah either way holla at us all right bye